Are you tired of your chords sounding like this? They sound okay, but they're pretty basic. We can add a lot to chords to make them sound more interesting. Perhaps you don't know what chords are. Don't worry, because in today's video, I'm going to be going over what chords are, how we can build them, how we can use them, and how we can add color to them to make them more interesting so that we can take our boring chords like these and transform them into something that's a little bit more interesting to listen to. If you're interested in learning how to do that, stick around because I'm going over it right now. So if you hold R1, you can choose your key and your scale. By default, Dreams puts you into C, which is the left hand side, in the key of C, except uh, we're using a minor pentatonic scale. So this is actually the key of C minor, but um, this is also a pentatonic scale. Right, you pretty much can't play anything wrong with that. However, this isn't what we're going to be using to build chords. So in order to build chords, we should look at a different scale. Particularly in this video, we'll be looking at the major scale and building chords from there. The reason I'm picking C is because all of the notes are just letters. There's no sharps in, or anything like that, and so it's really easy to um, remember all the notes that are in this scale. Um, so here's what it sounds like. So how do we build chords in this key? We can use the scale to build chords. If you open the chord settings tab, you can see that there are numbers here, one through eight, and there are eight, no eight notes here for us to play on the face buttons and the directional buttons. So these are all the notes in the scale, and they're numbered from one through seven, and then eight is the same thing as one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is the same as one. So when you open up the chord settings here, we can see that these are the notes in the scale. And if you highlight, you see do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, which you may have heard before. By using this, we can play the one, the three, and the five, which would make a major chord a major triad if we're playing from C. So that would be C, E, and G. So if I turn this on and I press X, that is a C major chord. And this is called a C major triad because it just contains those three notes. Okay, and all these other ones in here, they're not all major, and some of them are minor like D and E and A, B is diminished, and C, F, and G are all major. So why is it like that? Well, let's go over exactly how this works. So we're building chords by taking a note, and then we skip a note, and then we take a note, and then we skip a note, and then we take a note. So if we were to take the 2, 4, and the 6 instead of the 1, 5, and 3 and press X, we would get a D, an F, and an A, which gives us a D minor, right? So if I switch back to this and just press D, or square, we get a D minor chord, right? And a C major chord if we press X. So let's go ahead and draw this out on here because I think it'll make more sense if you can see it. Okay, so we're on the C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. There's our C major scale. And so like we said before, we take a note, we skip one, and then we take the next note, we skip one, and then we take the next note. This gives us our C major triad here. Okay, so just like we did with this, we're gonna move up the scale here. So we have a D, we skip the E, we draw an F, skip the G, we have an A. This gives us the D minor chord here, C major. 
D minor, right? And we just continue all the way up the scale. So we have uh, E, F, and G, and that gives us an E minor chord. We have an F, an A, and a C, and now this is a major chord, an F major chord. One way you can tell in dreams if it's a major or minor chord and you're looking at the piano roll, if we drag this down to C, this is a C major chord and this is a C minor chord. You can see that there are three half steps between C and E, so it actually takes four half steps to get there, one, two, three, four half steps to get to the third, whereas in the minor chord, it's only three half steps above the root. So this just gives us either that major or minor sound. So the first chord is a C major, and the second one is C minor, and you can hear the difference when we play it. Okay, so that's how we can tell if it's major or minor. You can look at the shape here in the piano roll and see, oh, okay, this is only three steps above, so that's a minor chord. Whereas this, the F chord, this is four half steps above, so that gives us a major chord. Okay, so we do the same thing with G. This is another major chord. As you can see the spacing. And now we get to A, and this is another minor chord. This is an A minor chord. Now the only other one that's different in here is the B, and this gives us a diminished chord. We can see the spacing is different than all the other ones. There's each of these notes is three half steps above the previous one, and that gives us this kind of diminished sound here. And then the last one is the C, which we're right back to where we started. So here are all the chords that we've built from the C major scale. Okay, so just to recap, all of these chords are built from the C, the key of C major, from the C major scale. Every note that we see here is in that scale. There aren't any notes outside of that scale, and so that's how we know that all of these chords are in the key of C. Uh, but now, let's just take a look at one chord. We'll just look at this C chord for a little bit and see um, other ways that we can make the same chord but with different voicings. So one of the main things you can do is you can rearrange them in pretty much any order you want, although the C, the root, and the fifth generally sound the strongest in the bass, but you can do it with the third as well. So here I'll bring this G down and I'll bring the E down an octave, and so we can hear these three chords, they're all still a C major chord, they're just voiced differently. Okay, another thing you can do is you can kind of spread out these notes a little bit more. It's called the spread triad. So we have the root here, the first note, the fifth note, and the third note is way up here, and that gives us a, 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 a a wider sound, you know, we're spreading the notes further apart in terms of their frequencies. Okay, you can do the same thing where if we take this G down an octave, we can then maybe move the C up an octave. Same kind of idea here, we're just spreading them out. Right, so these are all C major chords, and these are the, the ways you can phrase these and, and uh, orchestrate them together is basically limitless. I mean, you can double these up, you can have them spread all over the place, and obviously it's going to give you a different sound depending on what you're looking for. So now that we've discussed that, let's see how we can add color to our chords to make them sound more interesting. If we use the chord tool, we actually have the capability of doing this to an extent. So this is the one through five but we can add tones from within the scale to make the, the chord sound a little bit more colorful. So let's say we'll add a six in there. Right, 
it. It's a very warm sound. We could add a two in there. Right? Also a pretty warm sound. You can add them both together. However, that's a lot going on all in the same space there. But uh, I'll cover how we can go ahead and spread that out too. We can add a seven. So this would add the B. This gives us that that sort of sound. Right? Kind of a jazzy sound. So, let's say we want to add that 6, right? So there's that C chord with the 6 added in there. And let's say we wanted to add the 2. We can see this is like very cramped together, and it's going to sound relatively clustered. Right? It sounds okay there. But if this were, say, like an octave lower, this is going to sound really muddy here. Right? It still sounds good, but um, we can make it sound better. So if we move the D up an octave, for example, just how we space the other things out, now it's a little bit more spread out. That sounds a little bit better. Let's go ahead and move the C down an octave so it's in the bass there. Right? That sounds nice and warm. So let's take the C chord, and we can see that... Um, we'll do the same thing we did before where we skip a note and we go to the next note and this is how we get that seventh right makes sense we're just kind of skipping every other note one three five seven and this gives us that that uh, major seven in here so this is a C major seven chord now one thing you can do is you can lower the seventh by a half a step and what this is called is a dominant 7 chord. Um, it's a C major chord with a flat at 7th. And this is used in like blues and jazz and stuff. You can hear it. And if I copy it over, we can hear the difference. So here's the major 7 and then the dominant 7 afterwards. This still applies with all of the other chords too, even the minor ones. So here's the D minor chord we had before. And again, if we want to add a 7, we take a note and then, or skip a note and then take the next one. So this is a um, D minor 7 chord. Sounds like that. Now it's not a D minor major 7 chord, which this would be the major 7 because it's half a step below D. That's a different sound, right? Uh, but this is a D minor 7 chord. Okay. So I just wanted to show that you can do it with minor chords as well. And now let's go ahead and take this one step further. So we have the 7 there. And now let's do it again. We skip a note, take the next one. Now we have the 9. Right? It's the 2, but we're adding on top of what we already have. So we have the 1, 3, the 5, the 7, and now we're at the 9. Right? And there's a couple more you can add. There's the 11th, which is the 4, and the 13th, which is the 6th. And you can see every time we're just skipping a note and then taking the next one. So we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Right? That doesn't sound particularly good, but I'm just showing all the extra notes that we can add on here. And notice it stops here because if we tried to do it again, we're back at C. So um, it goes up to 13, and, and that's it. Let's go ahead and while we're on the topic of all this, let's just create a little chord progression and see how we can kind of juice it up to sound a little bit better. So I'm just going to play using the chord tool here. And I'm just going to use the 1, 3, and 5 for all my chords. And I'll just play a chord progression in the key of C major. And then we can go ahead and see what we can do to it. Okay, four bars, really simple. I played an A minor chord, then I played an F major chord, and then the C major chord, and then the G major chord. That's it, that's all I did. So, let's see how we can go ahead and maybe make this sound a little bit better. So what I'll do is I will make a copy, and then we can go ahead and mute this old one so that when we're done, fixing this one up we can see the difference 
Okay, so first of all, there's no bass. Um, you could add a bass if you'd like, like a, like a bass instrument or you know bass guitar, but we can always just add bass using the piano as well. It's got a fairly large range, so we can maybe bring that down here. It's still pretty high though. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to bring everything down an octave. So this is an A chord and we'll bring all that down. Okay, and now we can go ahead and copy the bass. And before I do that, let me just make a new copy. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna copy the bass down for each of these, just to add a little bit of extra oomph for free. So just by adding an extra bass note, with the same note that's already in the chord, we just lowered it an octave, we can already hear that it probably sounds a little bit better. Let's go ahead and start adding some extra notes into here. What can we add to make these sound nice? So, for example, we have an A minor chord here, so we can have an A minor 7 chord. Again, we skip a note, take the next one. This will give us an A minor 7 chord. Right, and that sounds nice. Since we have an A here, we don't have to have one here. We can. Um, and it could sound nice, um, but you know, if we have too many sounds, it might get a little muddled, so maybe we'll leave it. But we can also add a 9 up here. Let's see how this sounds. Right, there's a lot of notes there, so I will take the A out. Right, it sounds a little bit cleaner there. We already have the A down here anyway. Right, that sounds pretty nice. Now here we run into an issue. We have all these notes up here, and then it's going to drop really far down. That's going to sound a little jarring. Take a listen. Right, that's a little weird. So we're probably going to need to add some notes to this. Or another thing we can do is say we take this G and the B, and we just move them down an octave. Here we have an A minor chord that's voiced lower. It's still the same chord but it's just not as high up in the register, and it sounds like this. Oh yeah, that's smooth, right? You can hear the difference here. This is, this is what it was. And then again, if we move these down, this is what it is now. Yeah, that sounds nice. Okay, great. And now we don't have a big of, as big of a leap to the next chord, so let's take a listen. Right? Okay, so let's see, what can we do to this F chord? It's a major chord, so we can add a seven if we want. Sometimes it's nice to add a, a six into some major chords because those sound nice. Um, if we did add a seven, it would be right here. Let's see what we can get out of this. Yeah, see, that sounds pretty nice. Um, however, we have two of these chords here. So what if we played an F major 7 chord and then an F6 chord so that it kind of descends down to create that melody line up top there. So it'll sound like this. Okay, so far that sounds okay to me. Let's go ahead and maybe add some notes into this C chord. Now this is the, the tonic, this is the root chord here, right? So this is kind of like, this, this chord feels like home, you know, generally it feels very warm and, and uh, relaxed and settled. Now we're coming from a four, so um, there's not a ton of gravity pulling us there, um, but it does feel nice to arrive at this chord, I think. So um, let's do what we did before, we added a six, and then we also added a nine, like that. Um, let's see how this sounds. Hmm. Okay, it sounds okay, but I don't like that D repeating in there. So maybe we'll just play a root, the root, the root note. We can get rid of that, and or what we can do is we can have a flat nine. Um, let's see how that sounds. It's 
a little too dramatic, I think. So we could just play a, a C there, and um, this may be too many notes, and it might be getting a little too low, so we can maybe drop that C, and yeah, let's see how that sounds. Okay, now this is just a regular C uh, major chord, right? So if we wanted to add a little bit of color, we could. So, um, for example, if we wanted that minor or the major seven there, right? We could have both the major seven and the tonic there. Now this does provide a little bit of rub of a rub here because these chords are these two notes here are so close together. You can kind of hear that little sound, but uh, because it's up here, um, it really doesn't sound that bad. But if you were to take the, I don't even know if you could do it on here. If you took a C chord, a C note like the note C, and you played a C sharp next to it, you'd have this. Right? That doesn't always sound the best, so something to keep in mind. But uh, honestly, I think this sounds fine here. <laughs> so let's see. We have the C chord, we have another C chord, and we're setting up for a G chord here. So we have a G, B, and a D. So how could we maybe lead into this? Let's go ahead and let's try and move upwards a little bit. So I'm going to take that C out of there. So we'll have the E, G, and um, you know what? Let's we'll play the seven again, and we'll bring the nine in, and we'll play another E up here. Okay, so that way it kind of stretches up a little bit, so that we have that nice um, this tone, which comes down into the G. Now again, you can have, or it can go up to the F, right? So if we had an, a G dominant seven chord, right? But we may want to play a uh, major seven, or we could have a G six. So let's take a, a listen to this as a whole for a second, and then we can make any other adjustments we want. Right, so we can hear that little melody line, but this, uh, I decided I actually didn't really like it that much. So I'll get rid of the, uh, the minor seven. And now, of course, you can always add it somewhere else, so we, we could try and see how it sounds down here. Right, but it doesn't sound that good. So, um, you know, sometimes notes will sound really nice depending on what you're doing. And oftentimes the best thing you can do is just try stuff out and see what other notes sound good. Uh, as long as you have an idea about how these chords are built and what key you're in, then you know which notes you can play around with, right? Generally, you want to keep two notes that are inside of the scale. So, um, you know, if I added um, an F sharp in here and I also had a G sharp in here and I changed this to an A sharp this is no longer a chord that's from the C major scale and you'll be able to hear it if we just played right that sounds terrible right that doesn't belong at all um, so um, you know these are things to keep in mind when you're creating chords so that you know which kind of chords um, or what chords you can use and what could sound good. Another uh, thing maybe I should uh, mention is you can have suspended chords as well, which I didn't actually cover earlier. So we can see here if we have the 1, 3, and 5, that gives us our major chord there. If we played the 4 instead of the 3, this is a suspended 4 chord. Right, I'm sure you've heard that sound before. And it resolves nicely to that major chord, right? Similarly, you could have the two instead of the three. This is a suspended two chord, or a sus two, and it resolves nicely to that 
major chord, right? So we could try using a suspended chord here and see how that turns out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll bring this F up, right? So here we just have a very simple, there's not a lot of notes here, but it'll still sound nice. We have a C in the bass, and instead of playing the E and the G, we're just playing the F and the G, so this is the 4 and the 5. We have another C up top, and now we can hear this would probably sound pretty nice. Right? So more isn't necessarily always better, and uh, those are just things to keep in mind when you're building your chords. If you have too much going on, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, so sometimes some more sparse chords sound nice. So if we wanted to clean this one up a little bit too, we could. Um, we have quite a lot going on in here. Let's get rid of that lower E. Let's actually get rid of that E up there as well, and we'll get rid of the D. So now here we resolve down. Right? So we kind of have that little resolution there. Let's go ahead and maybe drag these out. Just to kind of emphasize that little small resolution. So let's take a listen one more time. Okay, so let's take a listen now between these two timelines and see how different they sound. So back to our original, this is just using the chord tool, this is what we got. Okay, and here is our new chord progression. Same chords, just a little extra thrown in there for funsies. Before I go, I'd like to show you um, what I was playing at the beginning of the, well, what's going on here? Let me show you what I was playing at the beginning of the of the video here. There we go. So this is a song called Autumn Leaves, and um, I have these piano chords in here, which you know normally are pretty. Normally they're you know if you look up chords online, they're going to be very bare bones, right? It's just going to say. C, or it'll say C major 7, or it'll say, uh, you know, D7, G major 7, right? And that's only telling you what the chord is, but it's completely up to you uh, with experimentation and what you want to hear to decide how you actually want to end up voicing these chords. So I'll let this uh, play out, and I'll let you take a look at how I voice some of these chords. And, you know, this is not by any means like a perfect song here. This could actually use a lot of work, um, but this is something I threw together just to show how we can voice certain chords differently, um, and they're still the same chords. And, you know, this adds a little extra fun juice to our chords and things like that. So um, I'll let this play out, and then I'll catch you after that. <laughs> So there you have it. That's how I made that song. Um, 
I think what would be fun is to maybe go over how I can make a walking baseline underneath this. If you're interested in something like that, please let me know. Um, I know that uh, normally I mostly do logic videos, but music is something I really enjoy too. So um, let me know if you enjoyed this type of video and if you want to see more of it, uh, or if you don't want to see more of it, let me know that too. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.